Good evening and welcome to worship here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. You can find a bulletin and ways to make an offering online at www.elcvienna.org. We're so glad to have you with us tonight. A few announcements before we continue on with our worship this evening. First of all, there's a trunk or treat sign up to give out treats and to sign up to attend as well. It's a sign up genius thing. Please look on our website and in emails for more information about that. We're looking forward to celebrating safely with you all. Also, there's a sign up to volunteer um, for our Helping Hands ministry. We're looking for a uh, new leader for that. We have a lot of great people that are willing to help out with it. We just need a point person to go to to help organize those folks. And it's a very well-established ministry, helps out a lot of people. Please uh, reach out to myself if you're interested in doing that or would like to find out more information. Our Facets Thanksgiving food drive is well underway, and we're receiving a lot of um, donations for that, which is wonderful. You can um, drop off donations of food for the food drive uh, this Sunday after worship during uh, communion, drive through communion. Also, it can be done by appointment, or uh, you can send them through Amazon. Again, check out our uh, website and emails for more details. We're also looking for folks to sign up for the Lamb Center to do uh, Saturday laundry. Need a few more helping hands on that mission. It's something that Emmanuel has long supported. It is a wonderful ministry and um, not too bad to do it all. I've done it a couple of times myself and it's a a good service opportunity. So please uh, check out our emails again for that. We have a sign up genius for it too. You can talk with Jane Holtor for more information. Uh, This coming Sunday, We have Confirmation on Reformation Sunday. It is a 9 o'clock service. It is an in-person service only for the confirmands and their families, but we will be streaming it on Facebook, and we really look forward to hearing their faith statements and uh, sharing in that milestone ministry with the, the four confirmands that we have. So please do join us for that and join us in congratulating and encouraging them as well. You know what? We're already beginning to think about Christmas time, and we have a Christmas outside event and experience called Born in Bethlehem, the first Christmas. I just want to plant a seed with you about that. We will be looking for volunteers to be actors and ushers for that. It's all outside. It'll be socially distanced. We'll still be wearing masks. And uh, it is for all ages. Please uh, check out upcoming emails for more information about that. Or reach out to myself or Kathy Uffelman, our Faith Formation Director, to find out more too. Well, our worship continues this evening with a prayer for healing. In this time of pandemic and racial tensions, let us pray. Taking a moment in silence for reflection. From a worldwide pandemic of the coronavirus disease, from sickness and dying, from stress and weariness, from isolation and loneliness, from uncertainty and loss, we pray, heal us, O Lord. From the sin of racism and injustice, from white supremacy and systemic racism, From white privilege, police brutality, political provocateurs, destruction and death, we pray, heal us, O Lord. We are your children of all ages, colors, genders, and creeds. For all nations and all our neighbors, we pray, heal us, O Lord. Almighty God, we believe in your healing and love. In Jesus' name, we pray. Heal us, O Lord. Amen. In this holy season after Pentecost, we are gathered in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight, uh, we'll be connecting uh, the work of César Franck, Prelude Fugue Variation, or Prelude Fugue Variation, uh, to the reading of God's promise uh, for David. And I just wanted to point out a couple things to listen for that I think will make the story hopefully even more meaningful for all of us. So the first one uh, is in this first movement where David is working through his questions as he changes and his character evolves. We have this 
lovely, beautiful theme. So it definitely sounds like questioning to me. Okay, so uh, there's that um, to listen for. And then after another section is uh, where, okay, here we go. Uh, the interlude where we're moving, there's almost this path or journey from David to Israel where we are let in on this beautiful plan that God has. Uh, and it begins with, as it says in the scripture reading, uh, where David's enemies are cut off, and he's made a great name, a uh, promise, transfers to Israel. So this is a very short, very thick chords. And it gets louder all the way to the end. And the drama and the cower of the chords reminds us of that journey that's part of that. Then there's two more um, elements here. We have a fugue, and in this fugue, the subjects that appear, um, I think, can also relate to God's plan for David's ancestors. In this case, Solomon, but also, ultimately, the kingdom of Christ. So you hear this theme come back. Definitely a meandering, searching theme. And then it begins to come in later. So you hear that build throughout. And then one last thing is uh, the establishment of the kingdom. We have this, uh, and what's really interesting at this point is the music will fall, basically. It'll feel like it just is gone. You may not even hear the pedals. Listen for it very carefully. And then we have the theme that comes back from the first movement that reminds us that of God's promise here, the establishment of the kingdom. And so what happens is, and I like to call this line at the bottom, God's steadfast love. So now all of a sudden we have this underpinning. And then what happens is, it's expanded. So let me give a little more volume. So I encourage you to listen for those elements as um, they color and hopefully make the scripture reading more powerful and meaningful for us tonight. Thank you, Robert. Our readings begin with 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 7. Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I've not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar?
Our reading continues. Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be a prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. The word of the Lord to David. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings. But 
I will not take my steadfast love from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever in accordance with all these words and with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David.
The scripture we have for tonight contains what is called the Davidic covenant, which is the promise of God to David. And it is a great example of God's grace in the Old Testament. Scholar Sarah Koenig points out that it is really grace upon grace upon grace that God heaps onto David. God has already graced David in choosing him, a little shepherd boy, to be the shepherd of God's people. God has already graced David in being with him always wherever he went. God has already graced David with peace. As we heard at the beginning of tonight's text that God had given David rest from all his enemies. God had graced David indeed. And God promised to continue to grace David. As God told Nathan the prophet, God would grace David with a great name and give him rest from all his enemies, grace Israel with a place of their own and establish David's house, the Davidic dynasty, forever. God also promises steadfast love, which will not be taken away, despite even sin. How about that? It's good to be David. It's good to be king. It is. But that is not what it is about. It is about grace. And grace is not about how great David was, but what great things God did with just a little shepherd boy, the least of his brothers. It is about how great God was to David. Notice that this text begins after David realizes that this, he, is settled in his house. But God's place is still just a tent out in the elements. After David is all set, then he thinks of God. Don't be surprised. David was not some great pillar of faith. David was a dirty little shepherd boy living out in the wild. David was a bloody warlord of Middle Eastern ancient times. David was an adulterer, and David was a murderer. The biblical David leaves a lot to be desired far beyond the children's Sunday school version of him. David was every bit as bad and good as any one of us. In other words, he fell far short of the glory of God. All the grace God heaped on David, David needed. God graced David by choosing him, by sticking with him, by giving him peace, by giving him a legacy, and by loving him as a parent loves a child. It is here in this part of our story of faith where we begin to understand God as holy parent, as father. David did not deserve any of what God did for him. That's a part of why this is all God's grace. In grace, God chooses us. God loves us. God stays with us. God gives us peace. God gives us a place with God and God's family forever. In grace, God is the only active one. The rest of us are passive until we are activated by God's grace. The grace God gave David is the same grace that gives us life still today. That grace is more than enough. That grace is the foundation of our faith. That grace is our only hope, our blessed hope. Amen. Our worship continues in song, verses 1 through 3 of Hail to the Lord's Anointed, hymn number 311.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and the Lord be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us go in peace and share the good news. We will. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 311, Hail to the Lord's Anointed, verse 4.